Obtain a sample of the unknown mixture from your instructor. Use the mortar and pastel to grind the mixture into fine powder. balance carefully transfer approximately two grams of the unknown mixture into the beaker Ooh, I don't know if I have enough of it. I may have to do it some more okay. So how many exactly do we add? It's about two grams, but they'll have the number. Okay. Place the evaporating dish on the top of the beaker containing the mixture and place the beaker and evaporating dish on a wire gauze with an iron ring stand assembly. And we're going to use a hot plate instead of the Bunsen burner. Place ice in the evaporating dish, being careful not to get any water inside of the evaporating dish or inside the beaker. Carefully heat the beaker, increasing intensity until vapor appears in the beaker. So you can see in there that something's starting to melt. There's starting to be some liquid inside. And hopefully that's not from the humidity, but that's actually the naphthalene's melting. And you can also see around here where it's getting cloudy, because this is cold, some of the naphthalene is subliming onto the side of the beaker. Now sublimation is when something goes directly from a solid 
to a gas, and then what we're doing is we're crystallizing it using a cold surface. In this case, the, it looks like the naphthalene is melting first and then turning into a vapor. And that's just vaporization. That's just the normal vaporization when that happens. But you can see the top, you can see the outside of the beaker here starting to have some solids. You can see a little bit better there. And as the beaker warms up, it should go to this cold surface on the top um, in the evaporating dish, that white ceramic evaporating dish. You can see the crystals forming. Mm -hmm. And we're going to do that until we think all of the naphthalene has been sublimed to the very top of the of the um, the bowl, to the bottom of the bowl. Sorry. Make sure this stays cold. So we've gone almost the 10 minutes, and you can notice that there's this liquid here. I'm not really sure what that is because the naphthalene should go directly from the solid to the gas phase and then cool on the top. But you can see down here we've got some, some crystals forming. And so what we're going to do is we're going to keep heating it until all the crystals go away and they're all up on the top. We're almost here. You can see the crystals are gone from down here and the beaker's almost dry. As a matter of fact, it looks like it's dry now. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna try and get rid of as much water as I can out of the top before I try to scrape off the naphthalene from the bottom. Now, why wouldn't I wanna just pour it out of here? This dish does have a spout any ideas? Well, if I tried to pour it out, like what's likely to happen is it's likely to drip down the side, even though it's got that spout. I'm turn this off. I just turned the heat off. Carefully remove the evaporating dish from the beaker and collect the solid by scraping it off with a spatula onto, onto the weighing paper. In this case, we're using a weighing pan. And you can see the crystals on the bottom of the dish. And now naphthalene is what they used to use for mothballs. And so we're getting a nice smell of mothballs as we do this. They now use something called perichlorobenzene instead because naphthalene is not the best for you. But it does have that nice smell to it. about as much as going to come off there. Now we're going to weigh the product.
So here we have the weight of the um, boat and the naphthalene. We've taken the beaker off of the hot plate. It's still, it's still hot to the touch. And we don't want to put cold water in there. They're not supposed to crack due to temperature shock, but they can. So we're going to cool this down also so that it's easier to handle. We're just weighing the beaker with the boiling stones inside. So now we're going to put 25 milliliters of water in our beaker. And it's not that important in this case that we get it exactly on 25, but we'll try. And that's because eventually we're going to boil all the water off. stir this. Well, I'll go ahead and use a spatula. Let's see this one. To stir it. And now we're going to heat this up to try and dissolve the sodium chloride that's in there into the water. We don't want it to boil because it might bump and some of the mixture might come out of the um, beaker. So we're going to heat it kind of less vigorously and just try to warm that up. As things get warmer, they become more soluble in water, which is why we're warming it. And what that means is more will dissolve more quickly. So more of the sodium chloride will dissolve in the water this way more minutes here. I think we're fine. So what we're going to do next is we're going to take this and put it through a filter. You can see we've got little black bits of material, which is the sand. And we've also got a clear liquid above it. And hopefully that clear liquid by now has dissolved all of the sodium chloride that's in there. So let's go ahead and filter this. And don't do this at home. It's pretty hot. <laughs> Make sure you use hot gloves. So we're putting it through our filter. And this is how we're doing this separation. The liquid's going in here with the sodium chloride. The sand is staying in our filter. And then I'm going to have to, going to, have to wash this because we're going to want all of our sand to go in on the filter paper and also to make sure if there are any little droplets of water that have sodium chloride we're transferring that we're transferring that to the to the liquid that we're filtering That looks good enough. So it's going to take a few minutes for this to filter through. We're just going to move this so it'll dry faster. So here we have almost all of the water gone. The water's gone from the bottom. You can see the sodium chloride is formed there. It's come out of solution. We have to leave this on because of the droplets of water here. We can't have those when we weigh it. So because the sodium chloride has uh, such a high melting point, we can leave this on here and it's not going to melt. 
and um, we can wait for the beaker to get hot and the water to evaporate. Now that the beaker's dry, you can see, we're gonna take it off of the hot plate and let it cool to room temperature before we weigh it. Okay, we're going to, going to weigh the sand now. And so we've got our pre-weighed container and we're just going to take our dried filter paper, mostly dried, and dump as much of the sand in there as we can. I'm gonna to have to do some scraping here to loosen it up off the filter paper. quite dry, which is why I'm having such a problem here, getting it all off. You always have a little bit of a problem with filter paper because you can't get all, everything off, but hopefully it's such a small weight that you don't notice a very big difference when you weigh it. And this is a very small amount of sand here we have. And I guess all I can get off of there. Now we're weighing the sodium chloride. 